the Sunderland Elementary School Committee meeting to order at 5.03 on May 3rd, 2022. Uh, call to order. So uh, our agenda this evening, <laughs> our agenda this evening, the first thing is to do is we are going to be looking at the early childhood playground contract in both. And so yeah, can you? I only printed like five copies of that. Mm -hmm. I, Jeff was supposed to share it electronically. I'm not sure if she if he did or not. But Cindy, mm -hmm. if you get it, okay. I don't have it, but he he had it. Okay. All right. So basically, this is really. Um, a decision for the select board to make. You guys are choosing the bids. We're giving you the information there. The show can walk you through it. Um, where we're at. Yeah, for the bidding for the uh, for the playbook. Play yeah, yeah, we're all set. Okay. Yeah. So you want to go? Yeah. Take it off. Okay. So the uh, contract for the playground redevelopment is with the town, not with the school. So the select board has to award the contract. Uh, so I did send out just a little summary this afternoon. Um, timeline uh, bids were issued on March 30th. They were due back uh, by April 22nd. So the um, design company, myself, Ben, and then uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governors, who did the bid solicitation for us, reviewed all of the contracts, looked at the tabulations, um, and then we have to make an award, or the select board has to make an award by this Friday, May 6th, and then we'll get the contract signed. Uh, construction to start uh, no sooner than June 1st uh, with a target completion date of the beginning of the school year but um, no later than October 15th. So four bids were received. Uh, the bids range from 140000 to 277000 all local companies um, and unfortunately the lowest bidder was disqualified um, after a review of FERCOG, Berkshire Design, Ben, myself, and then Jeff Kravitz uh, the town administrator because they did not meet one of the bid requirements it was stated in the bid that you had to submit five references for similar projects including installation of playground equipment and they did not have those references so even though they were the lowest we did disqualify them uh, which then took the review to the next lowest bidder uh, so we are making a recommendation to go with that company for the select board to make that award to omasta landscaping which is out of hadley they had um, at least five instances between um, city or private organizations of redoing parks and playgrounds, including installation of equipment. So we feel pretty confident in that award. Um, and we do look, we're gonna have ad adequate funding available. So the total contract is and then there are two ad alternates. So two projects we weren't sure that we were going to have funding for, that we wanted the companies to bid as extras if we could add them, we will be able to fund those as well. So we are recommending that the full contract be awarded. Um, so that's a total contract of $178,488.28. So, so you're recommending all one and all two be accepted? Correct. Um, we have roughly $310,000 in funding available. With those two pieces, we'll be just shy of 180. We do have some additional playground equipment to purchase because it will save the school and the town because the majority of this is coming from CPA and some town grants. The rest of it is coming from some small grants that the school has um, applied for and received in donations. So it will save us to buy the larger equipment on our own. Typically there's a 10 to 20% markup from a contractor on any type of equipment. So we're gonna be buying directly from approved vendors who are on the state contract list. Uh, so that'll save us some funds there. That's about another right now, roughly 65 to 75,000. So we'll still be well under the 310 that's currently budgeted. Um, so that is our recommendation. Uh, you all could appoint Jeff to sign the contract uh, and to sign the award notification, or I can send it off electronically uh, to Tom for you to sign. With that time off. <laughs> <laughs> So I believe that's what the select board needs to vote on is awarding the contract officially to Omasa Landscaping. And then I will work with FERCOG and Ben and Jeff to do some additional 
like work on getting the documentation ready. Um, and like I said, you could sign Tom, I could send it electronically by Adobe Sign if that's easier, or you guys could appoint Jeff to sign on your behalf. So, so I, I'm taking it to your, the Jeff, Jeff's our procurement officer, and I, I, he sent us an email earlier that he made a recommendation of the lowest qualified bidder was Omasa from Hadley. And he explained why the other uh, contract was not deemed qualified. So, is there any discussion? You have any discussion, Crystal? So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to take the lowest qualified bid of, um, from Omasa from the town of Hadley with alts one and two. I, I will second. Any discussion? So right now we're looking at uh, work commencing on June 1st? No, sooner than June 1st, correct. Okay. And we got enough contingency monies? We do, yeah. Okay, no other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor of accepting the Omasa as the lowest qualified bidder, please signify by saying aye. 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 Cindy, it's 2-0. Thank you. Okay. So I'll work with Jeff to get the rest of the paperwork sent over so we can award by Friday. Yep. Yeah. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to allow Jeff Kravitz to sign for the board. Second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor? Jeff Kravitz signing for the board, signify by saying aye. 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 Send us 2-0. Okay. Great. Thanks. Excellent. All right, so the second half of our meeting. Okay. Well, go ahead. Can I just, and you don't have to answer now, but, but obviously there are other things going on because we got significant funds that are not yet uh, committed here, the way I read this. And I'm just uh, wondering if, you know, to what extent that's all like determined, every, you know, and, and, they're, and, and allocated and planned for, or whether there's a lot of unknown still or so on. Because my sense was that, you know, funds were going to be, there was a question of how much we were going to get in this year done in this year versus stuff that might be put off a year if we didn't have enough available funds and so on. And so is that something you can address? Yeah. Or you can send us something later? Or? Yeah, they're both great questions. So uh, the CPA funds are 200000 and I believe that those are specifically stated for the playground, so right. I'm not sure that that would change. Right. Um, and then there's another 75000 in town grants that I don't have the details of. I believe it's a state grant, but I don't know if it's specific to the playground or if there's flexibility with that funding. Um, so that, that 275 should cover the contract, the equipment, and any um, overages or change orders that we might have, because right now we're only looking at the contract being about 245000 with the equipment. So we have a good nearly 30000 for contingency. Um, and then the extra funding, some of it has already been spent on equipment that we've purchased already when we had grant funds available. That's included in the number. Some of it is specific. For instance, uh, Ben applied for and received a considerate amount from Home Depot, $9,000 for a shed and some other equipment. So some of it is tied up. Um, that doesn't mean in the end that we won't have some flexibility to possibly add some things that Ben maybe was like, oh my God, we can't even think about that, um, or see if we can reallocate anything that is school you know, driven, but I think that's way far in the future. Okay, but we're not, we're not in a situation where we are um, only doing like sort of a major part of it, but leaving significant parts behind to be done at another stage after we go and raise more money or something nope. like that. So the number basically has turned out to be a fair bit lower than what Berkshire Design was putting out in their, you know, the, the, the plans that I, you know, been around, you know, being developed for a couple of years here. Yeah, a significant proportion of that cost was contractor, O&P, and contingency. Uh huh. Because we were talking 400k, I think. Yep. You know. Yep. So. And and that number has been reduced through um, donations of both. Um, labor and in kind, which would have cut the scope of the contract. Therefore, yep. Okay. 
It's good. That's, I mean, that's great. I thought we were going to be in a case of being a phase one and the next year phase two kind of thing. And, well, that, that's wonderful. Good for you. Well, that's so the other thing is, I'd like to add is that if, you know, you earlier you just talked about 10, 15 percent from contractors for buying equipment. If you get 10 or 15 percent, you're doing exceptionally well. It, it, I'm seeing very, very regularly 20 to 30 percent in these days for added expense. Mm -hmm. I would, and so I, I, I think it's a wonderful, just what the committee knows, I think it's a wonderful idea in policy to try to buy equipment like that. So, Ben, I don't know if it's you or, or Darius or, or to the finance, but though, though, that, that is, you're saving a boatload yeah. of money and putting it back into the product. So that is an excellent job, nice job. And, and what will be the process for um, supervision from the point of view of the school slash town during this process? What will, who, who, whose responsibility will that be? So Berkshire Design will do the majority of the oversight. Um, we worked with them recently at the, for the Conway Playground renovation and they had a great relationship with the vendor and then they work directly with the principal. So um, they'll make sure that step by step, phase by phase, everything is happening. They will map out the disbursement plan with the contractor. They will sign off on payments and then it'll come to Ben and me, but essentially it's Ben because he's on the ground. Uh, and then we'll send it off to Jeff for payment. So they're watching every step and, and making sure that everything that's supposed to be being done is being done. That's part of the design fee that we've paid them okay. already. So that'll be, I know when we built the library, there was like a weekly meeting with the contractor architect in the town uh, to go over whatever issues there were. And there was, so, you know, weekly we had, you know, what issues could we take off the list of, that had been resolved and what new issues were there and so on. And this was, their process for you know keeping things moving, yeah. and so I assume in whatever way they do it, Berkshire Design will be you know handling that same sort of thing. You know, trying to yeah. I don't know if they've mapped out a schedule with you. And every project is different. In Conway, we did very few on-site meetings with the town, the school, and the contractor. Mm -hmm. But for the track, you know, we met really regularly as a large group with them. Um, so this is at least the third project this year that we're doing with Berkshire Design. So. You know, we have a really good, trusting, strong relationship with them and feel good about them okay. handling the majority of that oversight for us. Okay, no, I just, you know, I looked at something like, you know, the problems you were having with the North Main Street reconstruction, and there was a, remember you saying at some point, you know, how often are we meeting with these guys because they're not really addressing our concerns? And so you don't want to be in a situation like that. And yeah. It sounds like you've got, you know, you've got this in a good place. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Are we ready to move? Yeah. Let's, uh, <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is the walkthrough with the, uh, the oil system. So, you know what we could do is, while we're all just kind of sitting here, we can talk about item number four, because I added that later on, and Bill can give an update. You don't have to actually point at the sewer system, right? You don't, we don't, we can do it part of the walk around, you can explain what's going on, but I think as a summary, when this was put on the agenda, we were in an exploratory phase of a problem, and I wanted to add it to it, so it was there, but we kind of know a little bit more, so can you kind of give us yep. nuts and bolts from the beginning for those who haven't been apprised of the... So, so Tom's met with me a couple of times here, and he's been a great resource, and one of the problems Tom and I thought we might have is with the drainage system, skirt drainage all the way around this building, and because we were getting some some water backing up in the building. And um, through the highway, DPW director, George Emery, he brought in the Montague DPW with some cameras last week, and we cameraed all the uh, cleanouts, and, and everything was, was uh, looking really good. So then our ejector pumps for the pit out here decided to freeze up on us, and um, I got the pump guy in, I had to get Greg's in here to pump the pumps out, and um, we got the pumps pulled out of the pit with Simon from the, the pump repair guy. And after we fixed the pumps and got the pit back down to operating, we, we noticed there was um, water constantly coming out. Not like, oh, someone just flushed the toilet and here comes some water. It was kind of running all the time. So immediately we went to thinking, boy, do we have a, do we have a sewer pipe in the slab that might be broken taking on groundwater because we are on a swamp. And I've been here now twice early this past week at 6 a.m. and there's no water coming out of the pipe. 
Now by 6.30, there is water coming out of the pipe. So then I go in the kitchen and the dishwasher's running and the laundry's running. And so I need to come back, to be honest with you, at, at like eight or nine at night and, and a couple times at night and see if this is, I don't really have a solid answer on what's going on yet. We just think that there might be something going on with the, with the sanitary portion here. So this was posted when the water was coming in and before they came out with the camera and right. that kind of stuff. And so I was like, you know what, this could be a bigger problem if we have a cracked pipe underneath the foundation or something, you know, again. So it's something that we're looking into, but we were talking about other facility things and for us to be having, um, what started off as a simple problem of the, the grinders failing, which is really gross. Uh, but the, the grinders failing, you know, those having to drain the pump, pull the grinders out, rebuild the grinders, and then to see that there was some sediment down there too. Are they saying that? There, there's, some, there's some rock and stuff in the bottom of that pit that needs to come out. And, and, and just for the record, the, um, I just found out today from Simon, he cleaned the pumps out. And what these pumps do is they, they grind everything up in that pit to the point where it's, a, it's, a, it's like a slush and, they, and it goes to an inch and a quarter pipe out to the main road. And there were, there were socks in there and all sorts of things that you don't want in there. And, uh, but they are not actually rebuildable, these pumps. So he would like to move forward with ordering a new pump. That's another conversation. They're both working right now. But, you know, they're, they're both 15 plus years old. So we spent, we spent I recall, maybe even through, I thought it was like about four years ago, so I was on the committee then, some number like about eight grand for stuff dealing with the sewer grinding thing. You remember that? I've been here three, that, and, 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 and it, was, I, it was when it was before you came. But I'm, but I'm relying on Simon okay. to, to give me the history, and he didn't, okay. he didn't. He had a hard time pulling one of those, a real hard time pulling one of those pumps out um, without breaking anything. It took him well over an hour okay. to get it out. Right. And so I, I don't have enough information to be to be useful. So. <clears throat> no, that's okay. I, yeah. Any information on it would be great. I trust me. His, his memory is trying to sharpen in mine, so I, I don't recall, but I would trust. Him. Yeah. 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 Right. I'd have to go look at my records see if I could find anything. Okay. So am I hearing the, the original, it's not what the original concern was, but we don't have an answer yet. We, well, I wouldn't say it's not the original concern. I, I, I don't know if what it's doing, to be perfectly honest with you, is normal or not. And I actually, we actually disagreed with each other today, Simon and I. I said, I think this is normal during biz, school business hours with the amount of stuff that's running and going to waste. And then at night, there's nothing coming. I mean, if it was groundwater, it would be running 24-7, you know what I mean? So I just want to put my eyes on it off hours again a few more times and come up with a, with a correct answer. Right now, we're kind of in disagreement on that. So, so, so basically, you have, an op it, it's, you have an option if there is a, if there is a problem with the pipe, you just slip line the pipe in, that length six inch pipe about is going to cost about fifteen thousand dollars approximately not that i've seen it but that's usually that length um so and when it actually goes back in it actually makes it stronger than the pipe that's originally there so, so it's a it's a good repair but the problem is if, um, if if you do have a problem and that and the water is releasing through the crack into the in the sewage system we had a, a different problem because that we would be hydraulically pressurizing the floor of the, the building right now. And right now we're, we're releasing that pressure through that crack in the pipe, if it's there. So it, it's, it could be a much more complicated, much more complicated problem. But that, I mean, right now, I mean, it, it can fix it. It's not, you know, just no, nothing that money can't take care of here. Okay. Nothing that money can't take care of. I have not heard about the hydraulic pressure there, because I was thinking, well, it's a small leak. What's the, what's the damage? I mean, the sewer systems start picking up water all the time, you know, um, as long as a lot of sediment is not being brought in. Yeah, well, you, and you think that if, there's, if there's actually water running in it, then in in there then it is it's pretty complicated because now all of a sudden you're taking all your fines and you're you're pushing all that stuff up underneath the building so and then when the water level goes down you're gonna have a void and, and, and so that a problem or you pressurize under the uh, slab and 
with hydraulic pressure, and so it, it, it can go two different ways. Thank both, you both aren't good. Making a simple problem far more complicated now. Could be, sure. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. But but I but I actually I, I mean build 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 responses is spot on. I mean it it, it would be running all the time, not intermittent. Right. And so you just need and if you have to, we also talk to Fletcher and if we know if it's not running at night, we can always put and there's nobody in the school, we can have Fletcher come, drop down the camera, go up go up the uh, the pipe and also check it out visually inspected also so yeah we were able to go we were from the pit outside here we were able to go into the building and find the Y. We basically you have the, the west end of the building and the east end of the building. Um, the east end of the building houses all our, our, our business end, right? Our boiler room, our kitchen and all that. And there was nothing coming from the west end. So again that's what, something we learned that we're, we're good this way and the water that we're getting is coming from the from that way. And um, and then, of course, school is in session, so we came inside and we popped, we popped the hallway cover and we looked real quick, but we were, it was a pretty, pretty invasive thing and, and school was in session. We didn't really want to be too invasive, so um, like Tom said, we would need to get Fletcher in here. Um, the DPW came down here gratis. Um, I think I owe a couple guys some lunch or something, but um, this would be a, you know after hours, weekend type thing and it's, you know, it would cost us some money. Okay. Roughly, uh, it sounds like we're looking at replacing the pumps. Do we know order of magnitude what that's going to cost? Yep. Simon gave me a price today of pump, shipping, and labor, probably twenty-eight to three thousand a pump. And he liked my idea of can we spread that over two years? You know, let's get a pump. Let's get a pump in there as soon as we can, and then the fall year let's do the other one. Thank you. Yep. I'd also just like to say in the meeting that um, George and Tom are instrumental also in getting uh, getting us to allow us to have Greg's you take all that stuff we pump to the Sunderland um, wastewater plant, which was a lot of money. It's over a thousand dollars we saved. Yeah, outstanding. So, yeah. So that's the update there, and we'll continue to update you on yeah. that. But as I said, that was it was timely because it was happening when I was posting the meeting. I was okay. like, you know, we're going to talk about one thing and the other. Um, so the other part is that we're going to take a tour to go down and look at the boiler setup, oil tank setup, yeah. and just talk about the problem down there with kind of eyes on, um, and the idea that we need to kind of plan what we're going to do with a oil tank that is end of life and what the different kind of options are and they'll kind of kind of walk us through but i think by seeing it and getting an idea of it um that was the idea was kind of that helps i think it helps the discussion when people are saying like where's that is and how that and that kind of thing and, and talking about those different things so if we're good we can yep. go see you on the road probably turn off camera or, or yep. yeah I mean, it's still continuing an open meeting because you're going to be discussing things we're going to be off camera because we're walking in, right, checking out that part.